Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today we are in Hudson, Florida. Basically, we got hit pretty hard here with flooding um, because of the hurricane. Um, it was just everybody here on this side near the coastal properties, you know, got about two to three feet of water and some houses even caught on fire. So what we're going to talk about today is in order to live on the water, you pretty much have to be rich. And I'm going to explain my opinion on why you have to be rich to live on the water. One of the reasons is just homeowner's insurance. What's going to happen with homeowner's insurance after this? What's your opinion on that one? Well, we all know that the homeowner's insurance is going to go up. You yeah. Know, it's, um, it's without a doubt. It's already been up. They, uh, they were wanting to increase the homeowner's insurance because of the last storm that came through, um, you know, and obviously other tragic events throughout the entire country. But now that we've had this, you know, we were honestly compared to the last hurricane, you know, we were spared. And then, you know, to the uh, counties north of us that took the brunt of our storm, this was mostly storm surge for us, um, you know, you got to take that into consideration too, but they're, they're most definitely going to be uh, increasing. Yeah, so basically the people that were on stilts houses, you know, seemed like they did okay. But may, maybe they saw, lost some vinyl siding. I don't know if you guys could see that back there. That house lost some vinyl siding. If you guys could see it, I had to anchor my boat so if, when the storm surge came up, it wouldn't float away. So, you know, but you can see all the debris and I, I would walk you guys around and show you everybody's houses, the devastation and a fire, but I don't want to look, you know, impersonable, you know, just walking past filming yeah. people's uh, headaches and everything. Because if you walk down the street, all you see is piles and piles of debris. Yeah, you know? people, you got to remember people, you know, it's, it's, it, people want to see, you know, real life and what happens. Um, but at the end of the day this is these are people's memories you know photos personal belongings things like that and you, we have to be respectful of, of those things and you know it was just it was tragic we were spared a lot but there were still a lot of people that lost a lot of stuff you know and that this, this is the stuff that kind of gets to me to be honest with you yeah that's why we didn't want to walk down the street because our original plan was to walk down the street show you guys all the devastation but there's people actually outside pulling their couches their personal yeah. belongings and all that and we're like you know what we're not going to do that if you want to see devastation you guys there's plenty of youtube videos to show you the damage especially here in hudson florida but what this video is about is really if you think about it because of the way interest rates are and property taxes now and values of homes and homeowners insurance it's not like it used to be um you have to i really believe you have to be rich in order to live on the on the water because some of these people are paying ten, twelve thousand dollars. I mean, do you agree with me? Yeah, for the homeowners insurance. Well, no. Do you have to be rich just basically to live along the water? No, no, I mean, like they're paying ten or twelve thousand yeah. dollars for like homeowners insurance. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then on top of that, you're still paying property taxes. Yeah. So you know you're you're paying some people depending on how you you know when you you purchase the home or if it was maybe passed down generationally, you know you could be paying upwards of fifteen, twenty thousand dollars just in taxes and insurance you know even if you didn't have a mortgage yeah i mean think about it and so so you might be saying to yourself you know what i live on the water but i don't have a mortgage so i'm gonna go without insurance let's talk about that for a second That's okay a good one yep so you you don't have an insurance you don't have insurance because you own it free and clear mm -hmm. that's fine until something like this happens right. okay and say your house gets wiped out do you have the money to rebuild it Think about it. It could be a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in damage, depending on how bad you get hit with a storm, or the whole house could be wiped out. If you don't have the money to cover it, it's crazy not to have insurance because then you're financially ruined. You know, and then if it gets blown, if it, if it, say the whole house is gone, you're like, well, I'm just going to walk away from it and take my loss. The county's not going to let you do that. You're going to have to move the debris, get yeah, you rid gotta of it. Clean the, you have to clean up. You can't leave the stuff in, you know, your on your land. So kind of going back, uh, touching on a few points that you made there, which are good ones. Okay. You know, let's say you don't have a mortgage yeah. and you choose not to insure or what we call self-insure. Um, obviously, we're not insurance agents, but, you know, 
some people don't carry a more or carry a uh, an insurance policy because they're just like, hey, you know, I'll get a mortgage or you know, I'll, I'll you know take out a loan or something along those lines. Everybody's situation is different to repair the the property in the house or whatever it is. But now because you've taken out a loan, most of the time the bank's going to require you to have actual insurance on it. Yeah, but what so, are you, what are you going to do when banks when insurance companies say, "Hey, we're not going to we're not going to do insurance in Florida anymore." <laughs> I was getting there. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so, now you're stuck in a conundrum. You know, you're going to have to get insurance, mm -hmm. but we just had that storm and then as we all know, there's so many insurance companies backing out of Florida because of the loss. Um, and you know, area here, so they're scared and they're backing out legislation's being put into place hopefully so we can get people back in but at the end of the day that's what created citizens insurance back in the day when this happened before yeah but at the same time you know we're not even in september yet and that's our busiest hurricane <laughs> you know we might have right. we might have more hurricanes and insurance companies low neither way hurricanes don't help they're going to kill the insurance cost right they're they're not going to stop they've always been you know, it's it's just it's an evident ability of living here, you know, coastal. And that's just it's the way it is. I mean, I grew up here. I was born right here. And, you know, we've seen some, you know, major storms here. Thankfully, we haven't been hit super severe, you know, but could it happen? Of course it could. And it's a big state. OK, but going back to the premise of this whole mm -hmm. video is you have to be rich to live on the water yeah. because you have to be able to cover the insurance, the taxes, mm -hmm. even just buying it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't recommend anybody buying a house that's a ranch that's on the water because it'll, it'll flood, in my opinion. So what he means by a ranch is a ground-level property. Yeah. No yeah. stilts, it's just a just a standard house. Yeah, like that, like that house behind me, if you guys could see it, that's stilts. They had no problem whatsoever. You see, like that, that house has just like stilts and right. that's it. But so what do you do? You love living on the water. You don't have a mortgage, but if your house gets wiped out, what do you do? Okay. And everybody's situation is different. I'm not a realtor. I'm not even say, talking about this because, of, you know, Bill's the realtor, but is it worth it? You got to ask yourself, is it worth the gamble? Because that's what you're doing. You're gambling on that house. Right. So look back. I mean, if you're going to approach this from a logical standpoint of whether you want to move down here, you've got to have those reserves, you know? So if you are going to self-insure per se, make sure you have the reserves so that you can rebuild the house. Worst case scenario, it's kind of like some of our other videos. If you don't ever spend the money, well, you're just that much more well off and you have the money set aside and it's there, you know, for rainy days for whatever. Yeah. But what up. are you, what are you talking about? You're talking about like a hundred Two hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like in the same situation where you know you're coming in to buy a property, mm -hmm. and you know you're going to put ten percent, twenty percent down on a house. You know, you're talking one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars in some cases. You know, depending on the, you know, property value that you're you're going to. But we're talking coastal today, so that's why I was kind of hitting on that one hundred fifty range at twenty percent. All right. So let me ask you a question now. You have a house. It's right on the water, mm -hmm. like the water right behind us. You could get hit by a hurricane, you're in Florida, okay? But you don't have money to rebuild, okay? You really don't have any reserves because you're, you're just paying your bills. What would you do? So you've got a couple options. So right. you could do a loan and rebuild, you know? And then you've got a mortgage now, basically. Um, you know, another option is to list the property and sell it and, you know, you have to clean it up and stuff like that. Or, you know, some of these, sometimes you'll, what you'll see people coming out is you'll start getting phone calls from investors. Mm, that's you true. Know. I didn't think of that. A lot of investors yep. are going to come out of the woodworks. Yep. So my word of caution to that is if that option works best for you, then by all means, you know, do what's best for you and your situation. But just be careful and make sure that they're, you know, a legitimate person. Um, make sure that you're running things through a title company, you know. If you're not using a realtor, make sure you're using at least get a lawyer to look things over, you know. Um, just protect yourself because you're also in times of tragedy. Unfortunately, the scammers come out too. And, you know, one or two bad scams can give everybody a bad name. So just, just be cautious and make sure you do it right. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Just 
keep and, that in mind. And if you did get hit by the hurricane, you know, when you're hiring a contractor, make sure that their license is short. Check out their reviews. There's a lot of scammers on that too. They'll be like, yeah, I'll rebuild your house for X yes. amount of dollars. Give me 50% down or 25% yep. down. And then you never see them again. Right. Or uh, some of the stuff that I've been told by uh, one of the insurance companies that I work pretty closely with is, you know, the assignability of benefits. Don't assign your benefits from your insurance claim directly to the contractor yeah. or or whomever. Um, make sure that you run that by your, you know, insurance agent or even a lawyer again, and make sure that you're protected. Your lawyer, your insurance company, not the one that's for the builder or the contractor that's coming to do work. Just make sure that you've protected yourself. Um, that's it. That's the best advice I can give you. At the end of the day. If you're living on the coast in Florida, it's not, I, I, I'm, I believe this, it's not if you're going to get hit, it's when you're going to get hit. I agree. So that's what it is. And you have to be prepared. If you want to live on the water and you want to gamble with it, you are gambling with it. I'm 100% sure that you are gambling with it, in my opinion. It's just, it's crazy. I mean, Tampa, we got lucky. We had like, we were supposed to get like four direct hits in the past few years and they just at the last minute, you know, <laughs> went off. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're having, like I said, I, I grew, it's been 50 years, so, you know, it's, we've had a couple, couple of close calls, a couple of good storms that came through here, um, you know, 85, and so we had uh, 85, then it was one about seven years ago, and uh, those are the last two that I can remember next to this one that we actually saw a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean. I'm sure there's more out there. We were just able to get to the property, you know, late yesterday mm -hmm. and today, I just wanted to see even if my boat was still here, you know, or my, or my dock and everything. I actually didn't even look at the dock. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> we should go look at it. Um, but, but that's what my point is. My point is, if you don't have a lot of money, you might want to think about not living on the water. Again, yeah. my opinion, that's all I'm just saying. If you're living on the water, but you don't have money for insurance or to rebuild if something happens, my opinion, I think that you should consider relocating to more of a place, you know, instead of gambling. Because once there's a named hurricane, it's heading towards you, it's too late for you to do anything. Right. So, I mean, it's crazy what happened. Like, where, you know, where we were yesterday during the storm two days ago, the winds was hardly anything. Yeah, we got nothing where I live, which is not that far from you. And I mean, it was during the hurricane, the day, actually everything came in around two in the morning here. Um, you know, I heard a little bit of wind in the morning and that was pretty much the end of it and it went away. And you know, this place got, well, like they said, what, six to nine feet storm surge in some areas? That's what they were saying, yeah. Yeah, so, but over here, it looks like people only got like maybe two or three feet of water, but what only? Sorry, I shouldn't even say that because one foot of water can do <laughs> devastating damage. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, but the people north of us really, really got hammered. They haven't got hit in, since records were kept where it landed. Yeah, yeah, up in uh, Cedar Key. Yeah, Cedar North Key. of Cedar, yeah. Yeah, that area up there is... Beautiful um, area. Yeah, it is. Actually, it's a gorgeous area up there, but um, yeah, hearts go out to the, the families and people up there for sure. But, okay, so... What's your opinion about living on the water? Just be sure that you can afford it, just like anything else, just like any any other investment that you're going to make. Just, you know, I don't want to be a doomsdayer, you know, or a naysayer of anything, but just just remember that you've got to be able to afford the insurance. Or, if you don't want to insure your property because you don't have a mortgage, and maybe like it was one of the scenarios that we talked about earlier, just make sure that you have the money to rebuild, you know, or you have the ability to get an, an you know, a loan so that you can rebuild. But I have a game plan. Yeah, you need to have a plan at the end of the day. So just ask yourself this question. If this house that I'm in now on the water gets wiped out tomorrow, what's my game plan? A, do you have a place to go to? Do you have money to rebuild? You know, I know insurance is gonna be ridiculously expensive and it's not gonna get any cheaper and all these hurricanes aren't helping. So I guess we're keep talking about the same thing, but you really have to think about living on the water. I did a video, the pros and cons of living on the water. I'm gonna post it below. If you guys get a chance, take a look at that video. Do mm -hmm. you have That's any other one. comments? Nope, I mean, we're just kinda saying the same thing. You're right, like just be safe, make a plan, 
and make sure you uh, check everybody out before you use them. Yeah, because a lot of scammers out there. No matter who you're doing, don't don't put out any money right away until you check them out thoroughly. Try to get a friend's referral that they did work for or something. Yeah. But don't don't get scammed because they're coming out of the woodworks right now saying that they can help you. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably too is. Too good to be true. <laughs> Anyways, this was a little downer of a video because of the hurricane. But if you guys like this kind of content, do me a favor. Just uh, helps out the channel. Consider subscribing. And thank you and have a great day. See you on the next one. Bye.